petition? Did they already find and organize their policies? Or is this something that's coming post petition? And the steps that you're following are, are again, the same. Um, locating the policies, which can be a challenge. And then uh, figuring out and tracking all the basic pieces of information that are going to help uh, us value them. So the limits, the dates, any relevant notice provisions, any exclusions, definitions of occurrence, um, the usual sort of things. And we want to be able to capture and document those. Um, I put this in here as a little aside, some policy archaeology tips. Um, again, the same sorts of things you would do outside of bankruptcy, looking through your old corporate documents, uh, brokers, and uh, reaching out to um, former employees and whatnot to try and find the evidence. There is one thing, the Bankruptcy Rule 204, um, that made me sound like a lawyer, I am not, but this discovery tool is uh, helpful for requesting from the carriers uh, policy evidence and information that is part of the bankruptcy. Uh, and then using secondary evidence. And I think that um, a lot of the, the value consultants can add is helping everyone get on the same page about what we agree and disagree on. And the existence of those policies, what the terms are, what the level of evidence is, is a big part of that. So this policy archaeology is one slide, but it's very important. And again, whether it's done before, during, um, before or after petition, kind of the same steps that you're going through. So finding and organizing coverage. I'm a big believer in databases for this sort of thing. So tracking the, the policy terms. When we're talking about mass torts, hundreds of policies, different carriers over many decades, um, many, many decades in some cases. And, and how are you going to be organizing those and looking at them? So just the policy limits, you know, it's more than just a spreadsheet that you need. You need to look at the language and how it's defining certain things. So the example I put here on the slide is the definition of bodily injury. We've got three examples, and, you know, all three of them are, are different in the way they're actually, you know, all, all different words. But the key point here I've underlined is whether or not it includes mental anguish. So you can use a database to track both the actual language of it, but then the individual, does it include the mental language or does it not? If that's something that's uh, relevant in, for example, a sexual abuse case. Um, and once you sort of get all those together, we'll show you how you can do some graphs and, and be able to uh, show that information concisely. Exhaustion and erosion of limits. Again, everything um, we would do outside of bankruptcy and people listening are probably very familiar with it. It's complicated though in bankruptcy, the pre-petition exhaustion um, if there were any outstanding uh, defense costs or reimbursements that the carriers were, were meant to be paying to the policyholder, any sorts of outstanding things, as well as the future dollars would need to be sort of um, organized and sort of a forensic accounting exercise in some cases on establishing those prior settlements and allocations, um, making sure all of those are being tracked. And everyone, again, is sort of agreeing to how they're being tracked. Um, and after we get all this together, I can't do a presentation without having a nice coverage chart here. You can use the technology once you've got it organized in a, in a fashion to disseminate it, and, and you might disagree. So we might have David and Ian disagreeing about some of these points, but at least you can put a scope and some sort of a box around it and get closer to, okay, what's, what, how far apart are we and what are the different issues going to be? Um, so that's the coverage part. So then there's the organization of claims data. There's certainly a lot of claims data in these bankruptcies and, and in the mass courts. We have the proof of claims. And the organization of that consultants play a big role in, whether or not it's the same consultant as they're uh, valuing or we have actual vendors that go through and collect all the proofs of claim. Because it's very important that you get a standardized form and way to capture the proofs of claim and the existing um, claimant information. And you need to make sure that you're capturing all of the stuff that we would need to do an allocation and do evaluation. So certainly dates are important for the coverage. So we can use those dates for triggers, um, any information about the injury. So the disease that they've been diagnosed with, mesothelioma, lung cancer, not a disease yet. Uh, the details of any sort of um, abuse that's taken place that are relevant for the valuation of the claim as well as the allocation. And this is where consultants can really help because you need to um, have your standardized procedures. You need to be able to organize them and be able to, again, agree if you're going to make some assumptions. Even if you disagree on those assumptions, at least you can be clear about um, what's being tracked and how it's being tracked. And I added a little bullet point here about the notice condition because I think that's really important in an area where consultants can help as well. Because, again, depending on 
whether these claims were uh, in existence and had already been noticed before petition or they're coming into play as part.